Welcome to ECLIMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have just discussed factors affecting thermal conductivity in solids. And one of the factors that we discussed is the length of a conductor. And what we realized is that when a conductor is long, heat conductivity is slow. And when a conductor is short, thermal conductivity is very fast. And one of the things that we noticed is that heat travels within a conductor along imaginary lines, which we call the lines of heat flow. And we said these lines always diverge from the hot end to the cold end. Now, that hinders the rate at which heat will travel along a long conductor. Now, what if we want to move heat through a long conductor, what are we going to do so that we avoid the lines of heat flow which are diverging outwards? That's what we are going to discuss in this lesson, how to minimize heat loss through a long conductor in a process called lagging. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define lagging and then explain how heat moves through the lines of heat flow, and then finally explain the application of lagging as a process of preventing heat loss through a long conductor. Now, what is lagging? Lagging refers to covering of good conductors. So we are going to cover good conductors of heat with an insulating, we are going to use an insulator, insulating material to reduce heat loss through the surface uh, of this conductor. So in this case, we are going to have a material which is a good conductor, like this one here, good conductor, conductor. And then we are going to use a poor conductor on the surface of this good conductor like that. So this one is now a poor conductor of heat such that when heat is traveling inside this wood conductor it will be insulated from escaping to the environment so the heat will be maintained within this uh, wood conductor now remember what we said about the lines of heat flow we said whenever a material is conducting heat from the hot end to the cold end the lines of heat flow are diverging outwards. Like in this case, in X, this one, we have two, two lines of heat diverging at this point. So it means this heat cannot move to point Y. It will only be wasted along this, the first section of this conductor, that is X. Then we have the second line of heat flow, which is settling at the second between X and Y. And then finally, we have only one line of heat flow which will reach point Y. So beyond this point, there is no line of heat flow. So it means the heat which will reach at this point will be very small. So now for us to ensure that they, all the lines of heat flow will lie within the conductor, then we will bring an insulator such that when this heat wants to escape to the surface of this conductor, it will be reflected in or it will be maintained within the conductor. Now in the next part, we're going to see how does lagging help to reduce this one. Now, how does lagging reduce heat loss? Look at the first diagram here on the screen. We have a material which is set between hot end and cold end. As you can see, close to the hot end, we have very many lines of heat flow one two three four five six seven we have seven lines of heat flow and we say lines of heat flow is the path followed by heat when it's flowing in a conductor so we have seven of them in the first part as you move between x and y the lines of heat flow are reducing from one two three four five from seven they are reducing to five now, when you move beyond C, we only have one line of heat flow. So it means as you move away from the hot end to the cold end, the lines of heat flow 
are diverging and the heat is escaping through the surface of the conductor to the environment. Now, if we want to minimize this heat loss to the environment, then we will introduce, look at the second diagram, we will introduce what we call a lag or an insulator. Here we are introducing an insulating material or what we call a lagging material in this conductor. So on the surface of this conductor, when the heat wants to escape, it will get an insulator, then it will proceed to move. So all the lines of heat flow, which were seven, will be moving from the hot end to the cold end in that way. And as you can see now, the lines of heat flow, all of them which were coming from the hot end will reach the cold end. So in this case, we will have no wastage of heat through the lines of heat flow, which are always diverging outside the conductor. So the function of the lag in this case is to maintain the lines of heat flow to flow within the conductor without moving to the environment. So this information can be represented graphically. If you draw a graph of temperature of a material, again the strength from the hot end to the cold end, for a material which is lagged, the first one here is lagged, and the second one is not lagged. So if these two materials initially, from the hot end, they are taking heat or they are taking temperature of five degrees Celsius, and they are transferring the heat to the cold end on the other side. If you consider for a distance, if this heat moves for a distance of one centimeter, in this case, the material which is lagged for one centimeter, a material which is lagged, it is temperature at one centimeter will be about uh, one or 4.5, 4.5, this is for a lagged, material 4.5 degrees Celsius. For unlagged material, same line at one centimeter is so still already, at, it has lost a lot of heat and it's about uh, 3.7 or 2.7 in fact, 2.7 degrees Celsius at one centimeter. So it means the material which is not lagged has already lost a lot of temperature from five to 2.7 uh, degrees Celsius. Then now, if heat proceeds from zero to one, then to two centimeters, if it moves to two centimeters, what we will realize, the temperature for a lagged material, the temperature for a lagged material will be here at about 4.9, 4.9, no, 3.9, I mean, 3.9, it will be about 3.9 degrees Celsius. But a material which is not lagged, look at it, material which is not lagged, it has already lost temperature to this point, which is about 1.1. This is 2.9, that is, this is now in this case, 1.1 degrees Celsius. Then now, if you, the distance increases further from 2, let's say to 5, for a material which is lagged, the temperature is reduced to about uh, here, which is about 0 0.5, but for material which is lagged, the temperature is still high for this large distance, it's about 3.0 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, for a lagged material, when length is increasing, the material still has a lot of temperature. But for a material which is not lagged, as length increases, it loses temperature very quickly. So it means in this case, for a material which is lagged, the lines of heat flow are maintained within the conductor. But for a material which is not lagged, the lines of heat flow diverges out of the material and get lost to the environment. So one application of lagging or a process of covering a wood conductor of heat so that you prevent it from losing heat is applied in iron pipes. Iron pipes are used to carry steam from steam boilers or steam wells. This iron, which is a good conductor of heat, carrying steam, which is very hot, is covered using a thick asbestos material. Asbestos is an insulator. It's an insulator which prevents or which reduces heat loss 
from the stream. So when we are carrying the stream, we want this stream to reach the destination while it's, it's water in gaseous state. So for us to maintain the temperature of that steam, we cover the iron pipes. Iron is a good conductor. Remember, if it's not covered, some of the heat will be conducted out. So we cover using a thick asbestos materials. We are going to discuss asbestos uh, when we are going to discuss applications of good and poor conductors. So uh, iron pipes are covered with asbestos, which is an insulator to prevent heat loss from the steam. That marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we are going to discuss applications of good conductors of heat and poor conductors of heat. And we are going to realize that both of them are very important in our daily lives.